This right here is a classic example of a circle or traffic circle in South Jersey, where I'm from. Now, my question to you is, if you were in a vehicle entering the road from the bottom left, who would you be giving way or yielding to? If you're surprised to find out that the answer is both everyone and no one at the same time, welcome to today's video. <laughs> My name is Evan Ettinger, and it's time we talk about roundabouts, traffic circles, and rotaries. Let's look at the official rules. This is the 2022 New Jersey Motor Vehicle Commission Driver Manual. You need to know the rules within this book in order to drive in the state of New Jersey. Now, if we open it up into the section about traffic circles, we have, there are no set rules for driving into, around, and out of a traffic circle in New Jersey. No rules. <laughs> Common sense and caution must prevail at all times. That's right. <laughs> the law in New Jersey is there are no laws. You make up your own mind. You do what you think is best. And it gets absolutely worse. We're going to read a bit more from this section later on in the video, but I think I need to now go into some detail about what exactly is a traffic circle or a roundabout or anything else. This was originally going to be a community video based on the comments you guys left me on last week's video on British versus American driving words. But then I went down a rabbit hole and here we are. So first off, what you call these is very different depending on where you're from. Most everyone in the UK is going to call any type of this type of thing a roundabout or possibly if it's small, a mini roundabout. In New Jersey, we call them circles. Most of the Northeast calls them traffic circles and Massachusetts calls them rotaries, even though those are distinctly different types of roundabouts. The rest of the US actually does use the term roundabout, Good job, guys. So the roundabout as we know it has been around for over a hundred years. The first one was built in 1909 in Letchworth Garden City. Just an asterisk, Letchworth sounds disgusting. Letch, wretch. Nah, the original concept of a roundabout was actually just to have a little island in the middle so pedestrians would be able to take a break before crossing all the different roads. But then came the invention of the traffic circle, the first ever highway traffic circle, which was in Pensacola in South Jersey, and the different rotaries. So the easiest way of showing you what the differences are are just putting them next to each other. So I found this interesting graphic here from Washington County. I have no idea what state, but it has a Woodbury, like, like my home state, so that's cool. A roundabout is traditionally a lot smaller in diameter than a traffic circle. Usually that means vehicles have to slow down significantly in order to navigate through. This is much safer for pedestrians, it's much safer for cyclists, and it's much safer for drivers, as if cars are going slower, they're going to get in less fatal accidents. And they're way less likely to enter into a T-bone style accident or collision than in a standard uh, stoplighted intersection. Traffic flows quite quite naturally around a modern roundabout with vehicles not needing to turn necessarily to enter it. However, vehicles do need to give way to traffic already within the roundabout before entering. Uh, give way is the British term for yield. Now, when you're talking about a traffic circle, these are usually much larger in diameter and speeds are also much faster. Whereas the roads of a roundabout curve naturally so that you're not necessarily turning, the traffic circle is actually the exact opposite. It's almost as if you're at a standard stoplighted intersection, just expanded with a very large circle. Whereas speed in a roundabout rarely tops out over 25 miles an hour, speed in a traffic circle rarely goes under 30 miles an hour. You can tell that it's definitely not one made for pedestrians now, is it? Even though traffic goes way faster within a traffic circle, because of the way that it flows, there's actually way more congestion and it's way less efficient than a much smaller roundabout. Bumped the camera there. First off, though most traffic circles have yield or give way signs, most of them have stop signs before being able to enter, which is automatically going to slow traffic compared to a roundabout in which it's all seamless. Secondly, whereas when you're in a roundabout, you actually have to go straight in order to leave and you have to turn or continue to turn to stay in the roundabout, it's the exact opposite in a traffic circle where you essentially need to turn to leave. And if you carry on going straight, you will never leave that traffic circle. I remember my first time getting stuck in the Brooklawn Circle in New Jersey. Oh boy. God, I just wanted to go to the diner. They're really scary in New Jersey for extra reasons we're going to go on to because these rules actually do not apply to my home state. Uh, like I said, that's coming a little bit. Next up, let's talk about rotaries, which are distinct as well. A rotary is much closer to a traffic circle than a modern day roundabout in that they are usually much larger, but instead of it being T intersections to get into the circle, now you actually have extra lanes that come and go depending on whether or not you are next to an exit or not. If you enter a rotary in the right lane, you do not have to commit to going out of the first exit. However, that means that you need to slowly try and find your way to cross traffic, meanwhile backing everyone else up to try and make your way across. And like a traffic circle, rotaries are very fast. Traffic circles, you're going to have about 30 miles an hour minimum within the circle. Rotaries are like, ha, hold my beer. Not while you're driving. 40 mile an hour minimum, please. <laughs> Just 
very, very dangerous for anyone that even has to walk anywhere near there, which is why there's not many pedestrians in the US. There's none left at least. The thing about rotaries and traffic circles is they were actually pretty okay back when they were designed, but as more cars have gotten onto the roads, they've just completely lost any efficiency that was gained by having them as a part of the road infrastructure. That sentence went all over the place. To show the difference in scale between a rotary and a roundabout, here's a photo of a rotary around a roundabout. That's pretty darn significant. But if we are talking about roundabouts in the States, there has been quite a resurgence, not in my home state, but everywhere else in the States. When I left in 2012, there were just shy of 4,000 roundabout circles and whatnot in all of the US. That number has more than doubled now at over 9,000 different roundabouts. In terms of sheer numbers of roundabouts, Florida comes out with a huge margin with nearly 8% of all roundabouts in the States being located in Florida. However, if we're looking at the number of roundabouts based on how many people actually live in the state, New Jersey, 50th place. <laughs> We've been getting rid of them, but still. <laughs> But in terms of the winner of that category, Nebraska has the highest number of roundabouts per person in the country. And in terms of roundabouts per mile, Maryland comes in first place. Now in the early 20th century, New Jersey was a huge fan of the traffic circle. They put loads of them all around the state. They were super happy with it. Look at this cool circle. It's like an intersection but it's round. <laughs> About 12 or 13 years ago, I used to commute once a week to the Apple store up in Marlton, New Jersey, in order to teach myself how to edit videos. They had these free seminars at like eight in the morning. I was like, oh, I'm gonna become a YouTuber one day. However, in order to get to that place, I always had to go through the Evesham Circle in Marlton. Oh, <laughs> looking at it now, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. <laughs> this is just why most people don't enjoy the traffic circles of New Jersey. They're a bit stressful. But what makes them more stressful is of course, the rules around them because they are different than every other state. New Jersey is the only state in the USA that has no official rules on how drivers should operate within a traffic circle. Or rather the rule is that there's no rules. It's not even like they forgot. They just straight up made a rule that says, hey man, no rules, just right. <laughs> Good eye, mate. <laughs> I mean, just looking at this traffic circle, I'm assuming if I'm coming from the back left, the only reason I would enter the circle as opposed to going straight through or just completely doing that first exit would be if I was going to take the third exit, which kind of makes it feel like, what's the point of this? Why don't you just make a jug handle? A lovely invention of New Jersey as well. I'm so sorry. You wanna take a left? You gotta be prepared to be in the right lane about a mile beforehand and then you can get that giant jug handle and then woo! But back onto the topic at hand, the more you read this very small section on traffic circles in the New Jersey Motor Vehicle Commission's driving manual, the more you will get confused because when I cut it off there saying there are no rules, common sense and caution must prevail at all times, that already has set the tone, but it actually does get worse. It continues. In most cases, the circle's historically established traffic flow pattern dictates who has the right of way. Did you hear that? Welcome to the state of New Jersey. Do you not know who is actually meant to yield here? Well, historically it's always been one way. And so New Jersey natives, we know what we're doing. We know how to go around the circle. But if you're one of the Pennsylvania or New York drivers trying to get your way down the shore, oh boy, you're in for a world of hurt because it is different depending on what circle you are, depending on what part of New Jersey you're in. And it gets worse. If a major highway flows into the circle, it usually dominates the traffic flow pattern and commands the right of way. Okay, so now, <laughs> if you are in a highway, you basically can just ignore all the other rules that don't really exist because you can just aggressively have the right of way. Doesn't matter who's in the circle. I'm in a highway, I'm taking over. It gets worse. <laughs> Traffic control signs, such as the stop or yield signs at the entrances to the circle also govern which motorist has the right of way. Never enter a traffic circle without checking all signs and determining the intentions of the motorists already moving in the circle. Whew. Okay, that's actually probably the first bit of good advice we've got so far, but here's where we finish. Whenever a motorist is in doubt concerning who has the right of way in a circle, he slash she should exercise extreme caution and remember the basic rule governing any uncontrolled intersection. That is, the vehicle to the left yields the right of way to the vehicle approaching from the right. Now, for those of you in the UK, you're like, oh, that makes sense. Oh, no, 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 no. What this is saying is that if you are driving on the right side of the road, as you do in New Jersey and the rest of the USA, well, that means that a circle or roundabout means that the traffic is going to be coming in from your left. So in the New Jersey official driving manual, when in doubt, when you are entering a traffic circle, you get right of way. Everyone in the circle has to yield to you. And the fact that that's different, depending on historically which way the circle has gone and or whatever your common sense says, and or if you're on a motorway, it's just 
it, it's no, it makes sense why there, this is such a dangerous place to be. All right, so let's just get this straight. There are no rules for entering, exiting, or traveling around a traffic circle in the state of New Jersey. Common sense must prevail. Unless you are on a motorway, a highway, a freeway, well, then you have the right of way. Unless historically the flow of traffic has gone a different manner, then you should be aware of that and then follow that. Or unless there are street signs telling you something different, or if the traffic is driving from the left, because at that point you're in a standard traffic circle and what it is implying is that you need to basically give way to any driver entering the circle. <laughs> it's a wonder people don't like driving in New Jersey unless they're from New Jersey. <laughs> this is chaos. <laughs> Oh my God. So here's a good example to drive home my point. This is Collingwood Circle in North Jersey. As we all know, Central Jersey doesn't exist. At first glance, it seems like a totally normal circle, but then we have to apply our New Jersey traffic circle rules. These three roads here are all major highways, 33 westbound, 34 northbound, and the combo 33 slash 34 eastbound each have priority in the circle over circulating traffic because they are major highways. During morning rush hour, the majority of traffic is trying to flow up through 34 northbound, but because 33 westbound is located on the right of 34 northbound, it has priority in the traffic flow. Therefore, massive morning congestion is all but inevitable every day due to the very nature of these traffic rules. And a study done in 2008 by Rutgers University working with the New Jersey Department of Transit on this very circle showed that the traffic trying to flow from 34 north would queue up at location five here waiting for traffic on 33 westbound to pass, but would back up inevitably to location four, blocking traffic attempting to go down 33 eastbound from queuing up, which would then block traffic attempting to go down 34 southbound from queuing, and you end up with bumper to bumper circle. It's a wonder anyone in New Jersey ever gets to work on time at all. Hey, I'm driving you. Now there used to be over a hundred different traffic circles in New Jersey, but over time, the New Jersey Department of Transport have been phasing them out, stating that they're just a bit dangerous. And, it's not the traffic circle's fault, it actually is. It might be the rules that you do not have around traffic circles, but also if we just stopped using traffic circles in New Jersey and switched them to the smaller, more efficient, and much safer roundabout, that might be a better option. In fact, the state nearby, Pennsylvania, we don't like to look at them usually for this type of thing because their drivers are much worse than us, you know. But in 2021, the Pennsylvania Department of Transport did a big study replacing 26 of their standard intersections with roundabouts and found a 100% decrease in fatalities. What? That's a lot. <laughs> that's that's crazy. Serious injuries reduced by 81%. Numbers of crashes reduced by 22%. Minor injuries reduced by 36%. We don't want to look at Pennsylvania data. Okay, fine. The US's Federal Highway Authority also did a study and found that by implementing roundabouts, there was a 44% decrease in crashes and a 72% decrease in crashes involving serious injury and fatalities. It's a no brainer at this point. Roundabouts are clearly a very safe type of intersection, just not an incredibly fast traffic circle that has no rules. I sent my girlfriend screenshots from the New Jersey driver's manual section on traffic circles and she was having an absolute fit because the fact that the UK, sure, has 25,000 roundabouts. So I guess it makes sense they have more sections, but they have six entire sections in their handbook dedicated specifically to roundabouts. What you should do, who gets right of way, the mini roundabouts, roundabouts that have roundabouts in them. It's just a bit scary. And people wonder why my first ever roundabout I drove through in the UK, I drove through. <laughs> I went right over the hump. I'm sorry, I'm just used to my state in which there are no rules. I asserted my dominance on that little island. <laughs> It's a shame about the pedestrians. <laughs> anyway, this is part of an interesting series I'm doing on information about my home state of New Jersey. I've made some previous videos on this topic in the past, and I have some I'm working up on in the pipeline. I'm still working on that community video with a lot of your comments coming up next week, so stay tuned for that. Otherwise, I'll see you next week. Goodbye. I still don't know which way to go around a roundabout. Hopefully when I do it next time, there's no pedestrians about. Oh my God, was that the backpack theme from Door the Explorer? Good for you, backpack, backpack. That is it.